Hello, and welcome back to the Struggle Security YouTube channel, where we're normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching the video. And we're gonna just jump right into the concept. So computers speak many different languages and have a lot of discussions every day, pretty much every millisecond of every single day, computers are speaking. They're speaking way more than people, way more than we talk to each other, computers talk. And one of those languages that computers talk is that of networking protocols. Networking protocols. And today we're gonna delve into one of these networking protocols called FTP or File Transfer Protocol. We're gonna go into some of the weaknesses from a cybersecurity perspective of FTP. And then we'll discuss how organizations can secure themselves, if they're using FTP, can secure themselves against some of the security vulnerabilities within the FTP protocol. So we're gonna have a very good time delving into, I wouldn't say this is a very difficult topic, but a very appropriate topic, you know, getting your technical feet wet and we're just gonna open it up with FTP. Let's jump in. So let's start off with the background. So the background of FTP or file transfer protocol is that FTP is almost as old as the internet itself, right? Even back in 1971, there were discussions and some developments of the protocol um, in order to be able to transfer files from one place to another place remotely over the internet. Because even before that, people were using things like carrier pigeons, they were using things like people actually physically delivering mail, which still happens today, but this was a way to do this digitally. So FTP, again, like I mentioned, stands for File Transfer Protocol, and just like the name, it is used to transfer files between computers over networks like the internet. So given an example, say for instance, you're a university professor and you wanna share the syllabus for the class to all of your students. You can have the capability of setting up an FTP server in the form of a dedicated server device or even your own computer to be able to upload that syllabus to that FTP server device. And then all of your students are able to access it at any time over the internet, all over the world. And the server, like I mentioned before, can be a dedicated server device, a hardware device, or it can even be your computer itself. Cool, right? Super cool. You know, as technology has developed, the abilities for us to be able to connect and even in the case of FTP, to transfer files all over the world has grown and we are at the point where we are now. But looking at cybersecurity, you know, transferring and downloading files are super cool, but let's put on our bad guy hat, right? Our black hat and kind of discover some of the things that can be used in order to abuse this protocol or for nefarious purposes. Let's kind of look into some of that because as you might be an early career transitioner or, or a person that's very early in your career overall, you wanna understand network protocols from a security perspective. So one of those vulnerabilities with FTP is that of a clear, it's a clear text protocol. What does that really mean when you say a clear text protocol? I'll give you an example. And here you are seeing a Wireshark or like a, it's a tool, a software tool that's used to capture network protocol um, information and data. Um, so say for instance, I'm plugged into my home router. I can run Wireshark and see all of the traffic that's happening in my network environment. So here we are seeing a capture of some FTP traffic, as you see where it says in the protocol section, FTP. And what do you notice here? The section that I have highlighted or, or, or squared with red, you see something that says user, and then it says Jeremy C, and then you see a response that kind of has that information in there, user and password, and then you see what it says, the pass, or this in, it's in the form of the secret, secret password. You are seeing the clear text credentials for someone logging into an FTP server. Um, so this is one of the vulnerabilities with FTP. FTP allows clear text communications in the form of whether it's that of a username or password or the exact file itself. It just passes it over the network in clear text. Anybody can read it. Anybody can access it. That of clear text protocol. So that's one of the vulnerabilities. The second vulnerability is that it can allow the uh, individuals who are accessing these FTP servers 
to have an anonymous login. What does that really mean? So anonymous FTP login means that anonymous file FTP allows remote users to use the FTP server without an assigned user ID and password anonymously. So anonymous FTP enables unprotected access or no username and no password to, to be selected information and for um, to access any files to those remote systems, which pretty much means that those FTP secrets you don't keep to yourself, right? Because a person who has the ability to anonymously log into your FTP server can see all of your file structures and all of the files that that professor might be sharing. So taking the professor again, right? This professor might not only put that syllabus up there, but they also might put grades. But they don't want all of the students to be able to access the grading files that they're putting on their FTP server. With anonymous login, anybody can see it because they can log in anonymously. And let me give you an example. This is actually what you call like an inmap. So there's a command line tool called inmap or network mapper that I use in order to scan some of my own infrastructure. And there is an FTP server that was running. And as you can see here, the part that I have squared in red, you see anonymous FTP login allowed. Now, what are you seeing there? What you're actually seeing under that section is that all of the files that people can access or people can see what's actually in those files where files exist, where different type of files exist and the time in which they were uploaded. So when anonymous FTP is enabled on your FTP server, individuals anywhere around the world who has access or can access your website or your FTP server can see all of the different files. So that's that second vulnerability that I'm pointing out for anonymous FTP log login. And that's a big vulnerability with FTP. So let's move into our third step in our final section about remediating FTP vulnerabilities. I'm gonna talk about remediating FTP vulnerabilities. And I think that people have three different options. People and even organizations have three different options here. So if there's times where FTP can be enabled on devices and it's not really used. So if you notice that you aren't really using FTP at all, or say for instance, that professor's class ends, that professor classes class ends, they can completely close off that service. They can close off TCP port 21 and that will take that FTP server information off of the internet and off of anybody to be, or, or offer it, nobody to be able to access it and nobody to be able to share it. I got tongue twisted there, so go ahead and edit some of that out. So that professor can take and disable TCP 21 and that will take off anyone's access to their FTP server. Another one that people can use is that going from the older FTP protocol to the SFTP protocol or secure file transfer. And what that does is that it protects against what you call man in the middle of tax. So individuals will not be able to see the FTP secrets, the files, the username and passwords, or any other critical data that is going to that FTP server because it establishes a bi-directional encryption stream between the clients, so in our example, the students, and the server. And the server in this example is that of the professor. So those are some things that you can do, or if necessary to use, you can keep FTP running. So if you need FTP to continue to run for different devices and systems, I run into that a bit, then you can create monitoring rules around who has access to those devices in the form of host level or network level uh, firewalls. Or you can monitor things such as failed logins. You can monitor things such as foreign devices accessing your FTP servers. And you can put in detection with, with a IDS, intrusion detection system, or even the form of an IPS, intrusion protection system, which will, which if there's a rogue access to your FTP server, it'll automatically cut off that access and kick that person off um, from connecting to your FTP server. And to kind of drill in on even more of the seriousness of FTP, I kind of want to bring your attention to a tool that you can use online that a lot of people use online. It's called Shodan and let's go to that section. So here I want to introduce to you a tool called Shodan. And Shodan, as it says here, Let's zoom in a little bit for your viewing pleasure. 
It says Shodan is the world's first search engine for internet connected devices. Discover how internet intelligence can help you make better decisions. This is something that's very commonly used for security practitioners to find internet connected devices. And I think that this applies to our example with FTP. So I have a pre-populated search here. So here, as you see, I searched on Shodan for internet connected devices using the FTP protocol. And as you see here, it says port or TCP port. Uh, 21 is the one that I put in here. That's the TCP port for at the FTP service. And as you see here with these results, and again, it's around the world of over 3 million, 3 million internet connected FTP devices that are spewing out this service. So that's something that's very impactful because many times we can look at FTP and people within the industry look at FTP as a very antiquated service. They look at it as a very antiquated protocol. Um, a lot of people are using SFTP in, in production, but we see that it still has over 3 million plus results. And the thing about this is that you should take this as knowledge to say, hey, over 3 million people are using FTP still. We still need to learn and know how to secure this protocol, this network protocol. So take this, put this within your cybersecurity ammunition bag. Um, and I think that this is something that can wow individuals who are interviewing you or just give you some of those technical chops to understand how to do some analysis on networking protocols. And I think that this same exercise can be done for different types of protocols too. So you can look at FTP, you can look at DHCP or dynamic host configuration protocol or DNS or domain name services or all other types of protocols like Telnet. These things can add to your cybersecurity arsenal and being able to evaluate the different weaknesses and vulnerabilities with organizations that leave them vulnerable to cyber hackers, cyber attackers, and overall just cyber criminals. So thank you again Hopefully this has been valuable to you. Come back again where we're normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Subscribe and tell me if this has been something valuable for you, right? Is this something that you wanna hear more about? I can do a series on network protocols, their vulnerabilities and their remediations. So we can do some of that in the future, but you gotta let me know down in the comments. And not only that, I want you to hit the subscribe button too, so you can get more and more information aligned with normalizing struggling in cybersecurity and overall cybersecurity as a whole. Thank you for coming. Come back as we normalize struggling in cybersecurity. Thanks.